what's up people, Dobbs Sports is right here and welcome to another episode of Game Gems where we talk about the games that should be gems and these are my opinions people so please if you guys want to be more civil with me give me your thoughts on what you think are game gems and just let you guys know I've got a massive game collection not just this is big but on this side over here that I can't show you there's thousands upon thousands of games and the ones behind the camera there's thousands of games so like I said this is only like five games out of the whole collection there is more than that, but it's just a matter of when I'm going to do another episode to do that Pacific console again. Probably for Series 2, which will be for next year. Anyhow, today's episode is the Xbox One. Now, the Xbox One I did not pick up on day one. I waited, I think, around about four to five years before I picked it up. And lo and behold, I was most unfortunate. I had picked up the digital version. I made the biggest mistake, so I went ahead and did a trade-off with my brother, and I got his disc version instead. For the trade-off, um, he gave me some of his games that he had remaining, which were, of course, were all FIFAs, which I wasn't really interested, but I went ahead and bought all the Xbox exclusives. So, I tried my hardest to try and only pick out the gems that are Xbox exclusives, but there is a few of these here that I've got here that I haven't got on any other platforms, probably because I didn't buy them, or I haven't seen them properly. But anyhow, they're all going to be random chosen and everything. Be warned, people, These uh, mostly all these are going to be probably old exclusive games. They'll probably be on Steam now, or they might be on PlayStation, or on the Nintendo Switch. Be warned, but still, I like them on the Xbox more than anything. So let's get down with the first one, and that is Super Lucky's Tale. Now, to me, it's a Fox version of Spyro. That's all I can really say about it. It's a lot, a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. Um... The combat is quite out there. Um, it's got the same, like I said, it's got the same controls as Spyro and Crash Bandicoot and all them type of little tiny children's games. Um, the the characters, the fun, little tiny little cats, little tiny foxes. Mostly the villains are cats, if you guys want to know, and they are very memorable. I do like the the big fat stupid one, the one that looked like a captain. You had the smart one, you had one that looks like a stealth, and then you have one that was quite posh. They were all quite memorable characters, I really enjoyed it, and it was a fun platformer. Um, for kids, this is perfect for kids, this is definitely enjoyable for a lot of kids. And for people who like platforming, definitely up their alley for this game to be honest. Really, really good. Um, there is sequels to this game as well, I haven't had a chance to even play them yet. I probably will do in the near future, but for the time being, I cannot. Phone. Um, sorry guys, I'll be right back. Camera's about to die. Apologies about that. But yeah, um, Super Tales is definitely up there in my list for the gems. Next up, this was the instant buy for me to get the Xbox One because I do love Roman games. And this one right here is one of my favourites. And that is Rise, Son of Rome. Now, this game did get a lot, a lot of hate when it got released, and I don't understand why, because I actually really enjoyed it. The story's good, the battle combat, the battling is really, really good. But sometimes it can be re re reluctant on doing the same thing over and over again, but you get that with a lot, a lot of video games nowadays, so people just have to get a grip of themselves and just do it, because a lot, a lot of games in this generation are exactly the same now. So many people are trying to do Dark Souls games, it pisses me off, but I just have to grin and bear it and just pass that game on and play something else. But the um, it's pretty much set in Roman Empire, and I really do love it. You play as a Centurion, which I absolutely love, because I do like Centurions. You've got good defence mechanisms, good attack mechanisms, great story, great character um, acting, and the amount of enemies that you face, classing as hordes and everything, Oh my god, it's absolutely pandemonic if you do not start attacking. If you don't attack and let them all come and like, pile on you and start attacking you all at once, it's a massive shit fest. It's like, oh my god, what I'm going to do now, I've got no chance in hell. But yeah, if you, do, if you guys do see this knocking about, it's not extremely rare, it's very, very common. But a lot, a lot of people don't really see it as much. They did do thousands, they did do a few million copies of this game all over the world and a lot, a lot of people either passed it or they never ever heard of it because it was, like I said, it was a, a first game release. And I would say to people to go ahead and try and pick it up if you guys have an Xbox One. It's definitely worth it. Next up, no questions asked, 
One of my absolute all-time favourite games on the Xbox One. Dead Rising 3. Holy shit, this was amazing. The, this is the one thing about this. This was the one game that got me the Xbox One. If this was going to be a platform um, on all platforms like uh, Dead Rising 2 was, I wouldn't have looked at um, Xbox One not one bit. I would have just passed that on as fully. But when I found out this was going to be an exclusive to Xbox, I was pissed off. But it still got me to get to that Xbox One and play other great games that I never got a chance to play. And I suppose the next one I'm going to be talking about is another one that got me the Xbox One as well. But back to Dead Rising 3. You play as... Um, God, fucking hell, what was his name again? You play as Nick um, Ramus, who is a uh, pretty much a biker slash um, car fixer upper who is in the middle of another pandemic of the um, zombie outbreak. Um, you pretty much are pretty much a, um, you're a person who is um, slightly infected but doesn't really turn. He's immune to the virus and people are questioning why is he immune to the virus. He has a number on his skin and he doesn't know what it's all about but it's all connected to him about the zombie outbreak. And the weird people that are in this game are returning back for one more game. You have yourself, Chuck from Dead Rising 2. You have the great legendary um, Isabella from number one. You have yourself, Nick, um, Chuck's daughter, who's like right in the beginning of the game, which is freaking mint because she's actually grown up and everything. And she's quite badass. The psychopaths in this game are very good and very unique. Um, some of them are very good, some of them are very cheesy, some of them uh, could be missed out, but I get where they were coming from. And the scenery. Finally they did something different though, because the last Dead Rising games they did were always in the mall or in Vegas of some sort. This was a whole freaking city, man. This was a whole city. Not only the houses where you can get in to go ahead and check out if there's anything inside there for supplies or for survivors, but you've got the roads, the freaking alleyways, you had yourself some of the shops, the restaurants, everything was just a massive sandstorm of pure zombie killing frenzy. It was freaking amazing. And don't get me started on the customization of your weapons. They boosted it to the max. Oh my god. Forget about the paddle saw. Forget about all that lot. The freaking sledgehammer with the combat saw. Oh, that was amazing. There is ones that you always know that are always going to be in every single Dead Rising game. So of course you got yourself the lightsaber. You have yourself the spring cannon. You got the spike bat. You got yourself um, the rocket launcher. You get all the great get weapons. But that weapon alone was like, oh my god, it's the best. But yeah. Dead Rising 3, one of the best, one of the greats, definitely a gem in my eyes. Next up, another one. So between Dead Rising 3 and this one, these are the two games that got me insulated one in the Xbox One, no matter what. And that's Rare Replay. Rare Replay, in my eyes, is the best Xbox game on the Xbox One. Okay, that's my opinion, okay, people? Why, you may ask? Because there's 30 freaking amazing games on this actual one disc. And you may be thinking, what are the 30 great games? You got yourself Battletoads, you got Banjo Kazooie, you got Perfect Dark, you got yourself freaking Conker's Bad Fur Day, for crying out loud. That's just a few to name out. Yes, some of them are from the Atari Trucks 600 and a few others, but they're still great games. But, 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 this game alone would have been nothing if Xbox stuck their finger out of their backside and made a game for Rare. And as you guys know, that Rare was on the verge of bankruptcy. What was the company that tried to pull them out of the gutter? It wasn't Nintendo. Nintendo left them in the dust. PlayStation had nothing to do with them, so the only person left to do it was Xbox. And this freaking did it. This was the payoff and it freaking rocked. Yes, this game is extremely cheap now. You can get this game for around about four quid to five, around about there at least. But 
You could spend so many hours of this game and play so many games without buying a single game. 30 games. Let's say you go ahead and spend Conquest by Third Day takes around 5 hours. Perfect Deck, per Perfect Dark, 3 to 4 hours. Battle Toast will take you a long time because it's quite difficult. Banjo Kazooie, a couple of hours there. Viva and Penyasa, a few hours there. You guys have at least 3 to 4 weeks of games on here to play one after the other and I played all of them. I completed every single one of them. I freaking platinumed them to be honest. Platinum as terms of PlayStation but I got the, all the achievements for this game on the Xbox and I freaking loved it. And I still play it to this very day because when I really want to have a bit of taste of Conquest Bad Fur Day instead of me jumping up and uh, taking it out of the actual cartridge I'll put this thing on instead. That's how good it is. That's why it's a gem. Last thing on the Xbox was, I picked this up not long ago, I think this, uh, I picked this game up for about 3-4 to four months ago and it caught my eye because it was a collector's edition, but um, CX was not uh, selling it as a collector's edition because they didn't class it um, on their system, they don't class it as anything else, they just class it as a standard game, so I bought it for only 10 quid, and it's Ori and the Will of Wisps, this is the deluxe collector's edition, I bought this for 10 quid! So I thought to myself, this is an instant steal, but not only that, the game was freaking beautiful. Oh my god. The sceneries, the controls, the story was nice. It was straight beautiful. You got yourself nice foes, you got yourself some, not nice foes, you got horrible foes that will hurt you quite ma badly. But you got yourself time tra uh, time trails that you have to go ahead and try and beat in in the nick of time. But playing as the little tiny spirit is cute. It really is. To me, it reminds me of a lighter version of um, Little Nightmares from the PlayStation and everything. But oh, it's just such a beautiful game. It really is. And if you don't believe me, look at these cutscenes that I'm showing you right now whilst I'm talking to you. The combat is straightforward. It can be quite difficult because some of the enemies can shoot very very quickly and very very accurately but all I can say is it's a get good game you have to get better at it before you can go ahead and win everything else that's all I can say is and with this game as well this game was also um, made especially from the Xbox Studios so no wonder why not a lot of people ever got this copy and I was quite lucky I had to pick it up and it's also a 4K game, so if you guys have a 4K TV, it'll even look even better in 4K. And to be honest, people, I'm still shocked that I went ahead and got myself the Steelbook Edition. The Collector's Edition, if you want to call it. Because it has everything in it, and I only paid 10 quid, which is insane. And that's why I'm going to class it as a gem as well, because I don't think I'll ever find it for 10 quid ever again. And if I do, flipping out, it's going straight on eBay, because it's quite expensive on eBay. But just the deluxe edition. Hell yeah. This is definitely in my collection, people. And it should be in yours as well. And I know that there is versions of this on the Nintendo Switch, which I would recommend too. But I don't have the Switch version at the moment. I only have it on Xbox. And I do really like it on the Xbox as well. So that's all I've got time for today, people. That is my five choices on the Xbox One on my gems for this season of, episode, of season one for game gems. Ori and the Will of the Wisps, Lucky, Super Lucky Tales, Son of Rome, Dead Rising 3 and Rare Replay. If you have any of your opinions that I've said out there and you agree with me, fantastic. Make sure you leave a like. If you disagree and you think there's some other games out there that are exclusive to Xbox One, not Xbox Series, that's going to be a completely different um, episode if I do get the series. I don't have one yet. Make sure you leave in the comments down below what do you think is your Pacific Gems on the Xbox One. I know you guys in America have more games than we do in the United Kingdom, and especially you guys from Japan. You have some very, very obscure Xbox One games, which I should have picked up, but I didn't. Anyhow, with that being said, the people are absolutely good to see you guys subscribing, and I'll see you guys for another episode of Game Gems. Cheerio!